The Airbus A350-800 was unveiled as a core part of the A350-XWB family at the time of the program's launch. The aircraft, designed to cater to the mid-sized long-range aircraft market, certainly held some promise and did actually attract firm interest. Certainly not to the same extent of other variants, but the presence was there. While initially considered to be a promising addition to Airbus's lineup, the A350-800 was ultimately shelved amid challenges and other opportunities alongside overlaps. But what was this aircraft? Why was it launched only to be cancelled? And were all the decisions that were made ultimately the right ones with hindsight? Well, introducing the aircraft first, the Dash 800 model was designed as the smallest variant in the family, positioned initially in a pretty ideal manner to replace the aging A330-200. At the time, this was for a broader A330-CO program that had its long-term future uncertain. Airbus said the A350-800 was intended to seat around 276 passengers in a standard three-class configuration and boast a range of up to 15,300 kilometers or 8,300 nautical miles, so actually very healthy. It made it really ideal for long-haul routes that were requiring a more mid-sized capacity, and this was its true selling point. Furthermore, the vision entailed the aircraft acting as a replacement for airlines seeking to elevate their transatlantic offering while slotting into that 270-seat market gap that many middle-of-the-market widebodies such as the 767 had enjoyed. A standout feature of the 350-800 visible through all other variants, it must be said, was the projected use of 25% less fuel over the A330-200, all aided by those new engines, lightweight composite materials, the aerodynamics which had improved dramatically, and other changes that you would come to expect from a plane that was ultimately part of the next generation. The fuselage was shortened compared to the A350-900, however there was a view that the plane would still maintain commonality across the production line, and also compatibility. Moreover, Airbus envisaged the 800 as being being a competitor to the 787 at Boeing in some ways, it generally targeted a segment where airlines were increasingly trying to fight for efficiency to replace older models. Right at the beginning, there was interest for an A350-800, with the European manufacturer believing the aircraft did have a place in the family at the time of launch. The consensus saw this aircraft catering to pretty diverse market segments and complementing existing units, while proving to be a valuable replacement for the A330 if eventually in the future. However, while the A350 program has stuck the landing, even at launch, the smaller focus model for this piece struggled to really attract a core market for itself, despite having interest. Arguably, this would also be seen later on down the line when we'd have the A330neo launched and Airbus experienced, and still to this day experiences, shocking sales for the Dash 800 model compared to the Dash 900. The A350 following its launch continued to receive a lot of interest, while the 800 had a respectable amount of commitments, it was never anything groundbreaking. And the plane maker never seemed all that certain that this was a model that was necessarily going to be the best way forward. As the A350 program did mature, the focus shifted towards the larger and more lucrative A350-900 and A350-1000 variants expected to really lead from the front. They would offer better economics and also scale for what airlines were requiring. And despite all that early optimism, the A350-800 struggled to maintain its footing in the market and attract the core aircraft orders necessary to make it a worthwhile variant in the broader family. One key issue was the design of the Dash 800. Rather than being a fully optimised model, the 800 type was developed as a scaled down version and ultimately it would be deemed yes efficient but an approach that fundamentally lacked maybe the innovation of other variants making it a less competitive choice. However, certainly the nail in the coffin came at the 2014 edition of the Farnborough Air Show when Airbus announced a new aircraft type, the A330neo, or a new engine option as it should be known, to elevate the A330CO and provide a like-for-like -like replacement. This was a very important announcement, as you may recall a little bit earlier in this video, I discussed how the A350-800 was going to be the adequate A330-CO replacement, but all of a sudden now, we have an A330-NEO, which throws quite a lot up in the air. The relatively easy approach of just whacking on new engines and some other refinements saw Airbus address customers who loved the A330 platform and make sure that they still had a competitive aircraft to fend off upcoming sales that were being witnessed at the 787 Dreamliner. 
the A330 Neo, particularly the A330 800, offered a similar capacity and range but at a lower purchase price. Alongside operating costs comparable to the A350 800, it was deemed a more efficient solution as confirmed by the CEO at the time. This really the most important thing to take from all of this. The Airbus CEO openly coming out and stating that the A330 Neo program was a more efficient solution to the A350 800. Airlines were increasingly gravitating towards larger aircraft amid the 800's launch in a bid to maximize their revenue per flight, and this saw them moving towards the 900 model rather than the smaller one. Airbus did acknowledge this and said at the time of the A350 800 cancellation that they fully expected all customers to either shift over to the A330 Neo program or upgrade to the Dash 900 in the A350 family for future operations. As touched on, the A330 Neo really did play a pivotal role in abandoning that Airbus widebody I've been speaking about. It was designed as a cost-effective upgrade, and it featured advancements right across the board, while not really resulting in Airbus breaking the bank, and it's why they've never been overly scared about the performance of this aircraft type thus far. It was always going to be a plane that would slowly acquire orders, but that number would increasingly go up, and they weren't trying to say secure 2,000 commitments. All these updates allowed the A330neo to achieve significant fuel savings, while maintaining a lower acquisition cost than the A350 family. Furthermore, while the A330neo was an exciting prospect, the one thing it didn't do was cannibalize any existing platforms that were released. It also provided a solution to the 787 Dreamliner, which was advancing quite rapidly at this time, and didn't really hit any of the A350's capabilities either. Furthermore, the newly announced aircraft ensured that there was continuity for operators that enjoyed the A330CO, reducing your training and operational costs. As portfolio optimization occurred, there were also concerns that the new A330neo would overlap the A350-800, and while these were concerns, it was just something that was always going to happen. The cancellation of the A350-800 did allow Airbus to really find a great balance in their lineup, a bonus for making sure that they had high production standards and freeing up vital resources for innovation to continue. The current base models are now, you'd argue, better aligned with market trends, and both offer high capacity solutions for airlines with a range of possibilities as well on top of that. They've narrowed down the 350 family and really streamlined it, focusing on what would perform well in the market today and what airlines are really wanting from their next gen types. The knowledge that Boeing was succeeding with its 787 and even progressing with the 777X was another critical factor as to why this manufacturer needed to find ways to fend off emerging threats. The A350-800 at times was a promising concept that while while formally launched, didn't end up having the place in the program that maybe Airbus would have envisaged at the beginning. While its cancellation marked the end of a chapter in Airbus's history, it actually certainly paved the way for a new product lineup that has become more optimized and probably competitive. Moreover, the launch of the A330neo, as stated by Airbus themselves, was able to offer an alternative that came at a way better optimal cost and was more efficient to operate. The A350-800 will forever be that all-important what-if, but it was a plane that was just never really able to get off the ground. To this day, is it a variant you would have liked to have seen, or do you truly sit in that camp where the A330neo's birth really killed off any need for the Dash 800? You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Please take care, be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis. And we'll fly.